Tonight we have Susan Casey from Pear Deck and we have John Perifo. John is um, one of the creators of Edge Protocols. He is um, huge with the Q organization and we are so excited to have you both here. So I am going to be quiet now and hand it over to Susan who's going to get us started. If anyone is just joining us, I'll be posting the join instructions in the chat. So if you're not in the Pear Deck already, don't worry about that. And take it away, Susan. Okay. So I see that I have a lot of people more in chat than I see in um, our joinpd.com. So if you have a moment to open a new tab and go to joinpd.com, enter in the join code. If this is your first time ever into a Pear Deck, you need to add in those five letters. It's a monomic, young lemons, help, acidic, violas. There's always a new code for every session that you launch. So it's unique to the session. But if you are coming in late, um, your kids could walk into the classroom late, they're joining you from their kitchen into their living room late, um, there is a code stays up in the upper right hand corner, YLHAV. So I am seeing that a lot more people got joined since we um, announced that. So continue to join us. And I am going to um, close out from this um, location and go right into our presentation. Is that all right with you, John? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just wanted to see what would happen if I said no. Of course, that's all right with me. Okay, all right. So um, I'm going to close that out and we're going to um, begin. Um, this is a picture of the two of us. Oh my, those were in better days before um, we had COVID, right? <laughs> um, and um, as this is Teacher Appreciation Week, of course, I'd like to say happy Teacher Appreciation Week from um, a former teacher myself, and John's a former teacher as well. Um, and we always, always start out by saying a teacher's job is really hard. Um, but this year, for perhaps the first time ever, the broader public is finally experiencing firsthand how challenging it is to educate a child in the 21st century. Um, over the past nine weeks, we have had the opportunity at Pear Deck to talk with and train thousands of educators across the globe as we have all adapted to the demands of school closures and remote teaching. And among, among this time together, we've seen that as educators, our challenges and problems are more intense, but these issues are also um, what's super cool, and you're gonna see today, inspiring bigger responses and bolder ideas. And the challenges that we face today, of course, have been brought on by this new virus, but those problems have always been there in education. Um, they're old and familiar. And those problems have just been magnified and made more urgent by our current circumstances. Equitable access to technology, old. Difficulty engaging every student, old. Ability to formatively assess your students and gather data, old. Um, but for those of you um, who have been on the leading edge of innovation, and I see a lot of you in here in the chat, um, this moment in time has maybe elevated your visibility and probably increased demand for your expertise. Um, we're going to even kind of show some of your work here today. Um, but now, um, even teachers who may have been more timid with technology are rising to the challenge of using it to connect with their students. And I get the chills when I say that because I think that might be why some of you joined us today. And uh, we know that around the world, you're finding creative ways to deliver powerful learning moments from afar. And at Pear Deck, we've seen a record influence influx of new users as teachers are looking for new ways to meet remote learning needs. So it's super exciting for us and for me as a former educator to, um, to see the innovation and transforming um, practices. At Pear Deck, we do believe our platform can definitely help you solve uh, many of the challenges that you are facing head on. So I'm super excited to get to our agenda. And Susan, I feel like I, th I feel like we're separated at birth right now because you basically are saying everything that I would, the tiny little twist I would add would be it's exposed inherent weaknesses in the system that we are using, right? So these have always been there. I totally agree with what you're saying. The things that a lot of teachers are struggling with, engagement, right? Those things have always been there. How to get responses from all the kids, always had that problem. Um, how to grade all this work, always had that problem. These things are just 
really getting exposed right now. And I wanted, if I could, to do two more shout outs. Shannon is my test stu uh, student, uh, Shannon Tablato. If we need people to volunteer for stuff, Shannon's that person, so just call her out. And then uh, we have a celebrity in here. Jennifer Garner is joining us. Uh, yeah, and you wonder it, uh, what kind of a celebrity is that? She is my uh, daughter's boyfriend's mom, so she's a celebrity. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, okay, well, thank you. And I'm so glad we're both on the same page with that. And I think, um, again, once a teacher, always a teacher, we're both still teachers. And that's what I hope to be able to convey to you today um, in just kind of this is our, our modest agenda, but we're gonna start with a broad, brief overview of how to build your first Pear Deck lesson. It's gonna take less than two minutes because I don't really have time to completely demonstrate that but I'm gonna show you. Um, we're gonna discuss a few best practices um, for video conferencing currently, and I want John to um, add in, jump in there. Then we're gonna dive into using Pear Deck um, in, with the two different views. You're currently exploring Pear Deck as a student right now, um, but you're gonna be able to take a look um, at the teacher dashboard and take a look at the teacher perspective and some of the data and the analytics behind it. And, um, John's going to go way into Edge of Protocols and show that there's no better time like the present to um, jump in and start using those and how you can use them with um, Pear Deck. Also, I don't know if we mentioned, we are recording this webinar. Um, so um, by tomorrow, you will be sent a copy of the live webinar to share with um, colleagues or just for your own further reflection and um, understanding. So that's, that's what we're going to do. And this is just our first um, quick slide on how to create a Pear Deck. Um, really, to build a Pear Deck, it's just three short steps, and it's always the same. Step one is you open up the Pear Deck add-on. Um, you are looking at this, obviously, and using it in the Google Suite. Um, however, we're completely integrated at, with PowerPoint as an add-in. Um, but today, I'm demonstrating that here we are at the add-on button. And when you add it on, it creates a sidebar in Google Slides. And from that sidebar, we have a library of custom questions. And that's where I recommend you always start using our library. We have hundreds of templates for you ready to teach. Um, there's great checks for understanding and ways to build conversations, um, thinking skills. Um, but keep that word template in mind because this is not a curriculum. Our templates are frameworks for your own content no matter what grade level you teach, kindergarten through college. Uh, we have critical thinking prompts, social emotional learning prompts, and even ones for little ones. Um, always recommend you end with an exit ticket. My favorite one we're gonna use today is what's the most important thing you learned today. Um, so you're gonna get a chance to do that. Um, but with Pear Deck, it doesn't matter again what grade level you teach or what subject. Um, it's gonna enable your kids to be able to engage, be reflective, and as peers, learn from each other. Um, so you can also add in um, six different question types um, if you don't want to use the templates. And those are found right below the library. But then the final and, step, yes, go ahead. And I was just going to say, Susan, uh, the first time I jumped into Pear Deck, I was like, oh my gosh, all these buttons, right? Oh, what are... And, and that's where the Edge of Protocols mindset comes in. If you can just make a Google slide deck or a PowerPoint and either put a link to a video or an activity or a picture the kids can look at, and then just simply add, draw a picture. You're now doing sketch and tell. And as your skills get better, you can add more tools. It doesn't have to start off with a 40 slide slide deck, even though Pear Deck has so many cool options. You don't have to start there. You can start with like three slides. And then Absolutely. when you get better, you do more. Absolutely. Total, that's totally my recommendation. Start with three, three slides and that's all you need. Um, and I love that with the edge of protocols is because once you teach a framework, uh, once you teach a protocol, the kids know it and then you're not reaching mm -hmm. that again in um, January. It's, it's amazing. Um, but after you do that, the only next step is you present your lesson with Pear Deck. Um, you already experienced signing in with joinpd.com. But I'm also going to show you in just a little while how you can launch straight into asynchronous mode from the present lesson button. Um, that was one of our big aha innovations yep. um, during COVID, right? That's our, one of them. Um, and we, there's, there's a few. Um, but I'm going to show you what that looks like in just a minute. 
but the green button is where you present from because that is what makes Pear Deck different from a static old fashioned slide um, presentation. And so um, with that, let me just go over this. And I think John, you may have some other, um, you know, best tips here. We, we're like eight or nine weeks into remote learning now. So this might just be kind of a, you know, yeah, I, I know that kind of stuff there. Um, and I don't yeah. have to read this slide. But maybe I, I think those are goodies. The one I would add, Susan, is that if you use a tool like Pear Deck, you don't have to have your kids doing like, use this tool, open this tab, use this tool, open this tab, use this tool, open this tab. With a little tweaking and adjusting, you can do five or six protocols in, in one day. Uh, in one slide deck and get one report. And that's a really big time saver. But here's my favorite one is, if you copy that slide deck and just change a couple things, you are planned for tomorrow. <laughs> so that's, I love your tips there, but the really, I'm gonna go to the higher level on the, on the, uh, the pedagogical piece is, imagine using basically the same slide deck every day, mm -hmm. adding your activities once a week, and then just simply asking the questions that you type in at the last second or that you ask the kids just verbally, your prep time goes down a lot right away. 100%. Thank you. Thank you for always adding in those things that I uh, tend to forget, um, but that are equally important and more yep. important. So the whole you. advantage of having two presenters. Exactly. Um, so let's um, get to our very first Pear Deck engagement um, slide. Um, and John, why don't you talk about why you asked for a slide like this? Yeah, sure. And you know, you guys have been hearing a lot of things on the internet and on Twitter and conversations, which is like, hey, this is super stressful and we get that. But you know what? I'm also hearing a group of people that are saying, well, here's the cool part. So see, let's, let's talk about being a little better mood right now. Uh, everybody, if you can jump in and share a quick response, what's... What's something that you've gotten from this time period? Because I'm, I'm a believer that uh, I probably got this from my grandma Rose. Like a lot of things or situations are what you manage. And while I, I totally agree that it's, a, it's tragic that we've had the, the uh, loss of life and all those things, what's one of the cool upside things? And this is a chance for 300 kids to answer the question. Right. Well, I am, I know we have so many people on here when you're talking about bandwidth. I am um, trying to show those responses um, at the moment and it doesn't seem to be loading on my slide. So actually, this is not a bad place. Um, I wasn't gonna show you all this um, prior to now, um, but I am going to bring over my teacher dashboard. Um, this is my superpower. This is like my secret classroom management tool that I would never show students in a million years, but it is mine to be able to assess the situation. And because it's not showing on the board, I'm gonna just bring this over here and we're gonna take a look at it from this end. And it's very safe today because- So Susan, are you saying we're not normally gonna have a 300 person class and this works perfectly with more like 30? <laughs> yeah, 50, 100. I had, uh, <laughs> I had like 100 people in my webinar yesterday morning from literally every continent on the planet except for Antarctica. And it worked really well. Um, but we have 280 students logged in, so I'm, I, I hate to say um, we're but taking a look at some of these responses. These are fabulous. Being able to be student centered, we could just stop right there, right? Because I think there's a lot about this that we can really focus on the kids right now. That's a great one. What's one that, what's one that strikes you, Susan? Um, I love spending more time with the students' families and engaging them all in the education of the student. Family engagement is something we have been struggling with for decades, right? And this is so fabulous yep. um, to have that. How about flexible scheduling? Uh, is anybody going to put uh, bathroom breaks whenever I want? That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, medically challenged kids can participate. It's Oh, nice. I love that. Yeah, um, Susan, look, it, it fed through in the background. I think you can close that window. Oh, it's it. Okay, then I'll take this away. But that's my teacher dashboard. I need uh, to make, a, I need to make a, a, a sticker that says, we crashed Pear Deck all together. There you go. Um, so anyway, so here's some of um, the other um, responses that we have been getting um, from this. But it's not moving up and down. So I think I'm going to go to my next slide. But it does look like um, student, I'm a, you know, student voice, time for designing lessons. Asynchronous allows students to explore new ways to learn and find cool info that they never would have discovered. One of my uh, knowledge. 
one of my other favorites I've heard a few people say is that there's a different group of kids emerging online than they had in class. So mm -hmm. there's some of the kids that never engaged in class are now engaging more online. And what that really makes my teacher brain think about is how can I get to those kids when we go back to real life? Isn't how do we that, do that? true? And I love um, whoever is my, um, whoever is the dog avatar says, I'm student voice. My quiet ones are using audio and video to share more than ever. And that's yep. the reason we, we built Pear Deck was for student voice, one of the reasons why anyway. Um, so I love that that is um, coming out too. So thank you all for those responses. I wish I could go up and uh, show, oh, there's some more. There we go. We've got a lot in here. Everybody shared. Got a lot of responses in Pear Deck. We shoot for 100% student engagement in every class. And we know from data that we get about 95%. And that's a really good percentage for a day. Maybe. And again, what I want to share about this is every, unlike, I, I, I'm sure you've been in keynotes before, Susan, where somebody says, turn and talk with your neighbor. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is nobody gets to really hear those conversations. And I think it, it it means those conversations have left less depth and authenticity. In this model, everybody knows in the class that everybody's going to see their answer. And I think it really creates a richer conversation. Absolutely. But for those people that are asking if, um, you know, you can hide certain responses that you, um, what might not be appropriate to that particular question, you definitely on your teacher dashboard have the opportunity to hide some responses to, to star um, specific ones. And I'll show you that in a moment. Um, but let's um, go on now to this next question, because I think this is pretty vital to um, where, um, where we are as a time frame in uh, society. And hopefully you have a screen up there that's asking you about your remote learning environment. Do you see it or do we still see the answers? There's a lag. I think we're still on the answers right now, yeah. Okay, get ready. I'm gonna to make an announcement though. I'm gonna make an announcement. Uh, one of our teacher appreciation winners is actually in this session, Susan. Oh, really? Yes, is Diana Dewey in this session. Oh, so cool. Okay, I'm gonna see if maybe I can make this move ahead with the outside. Okay, there we go. I'll do it that way. Diane Dewey, congratulations. <laughs> Diane has just won one year subscription to Pear Deck Premium. What a coincidence. That's hilarious. That's awesome. Okay, so hopefully I see, um, you see the screen what best describes your current remote learning environment. Yep. yep. And um, we're getting um, some responses. And I do have another uh, lag in my responses, but I um, would say that I'm, I don't necessarily need to share those responses um, because in generally what it's looking like to me that these are mirroring what we have been seeing for the past several weeks when we asked this question and about 75% are teaching um, with both, um, maybe about 45% only, only asynchronous and very little um, that are teaching synchronous um, live every day. And um, no, you don't, so I was just going to answer, you don't see your responses on the student screen. Um, you would see them on the presenter view. I would see them on the teacher, um, on the teacher dashboard, which I am not seeing at the moment. So I'm going to go on to my next slide, um, guys, because we have a lot to get through and I want to make sure we get to on um, the Edge of Protocols um, section there. Um, when you, okay. Ah, okay, well, I did show you that. Um, your student view is what you're all using now. Um, window two, which would be your Zoom view if you opened up a secondary window, um, is your presentation view. Um, my teacher view is what I brought over to the slide um, deck and showed you um, how I can use that performative assessment on a moment-by-moment um, -moment basis. Um, sorry, this is freaking out a little bit, but I guess I could use the slide. <laughs> I can talk about the ad audio. When we were talking about new features and new innovations, um, Pear Deck, wow, sorry about that. 
Okay. Pear Deck announced last week um, that we were launching student pay sessions straight from the sidebar. And so even though that just hopped to another slide by itself, um, sorry. Um, are you guys seeing flickering slides? Yeah. I think you might have done a couple of clicks and they're catching up to you right now. Well, that was going backwards. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, okay. But it's okay. I, I, we can kind of like talk in conglomeration. In the last two weeks, in response to teachers' requests, um, Pear Deck added the capability to add audio voiceover to any slide right from the Pear Deck sidebar. So right below the, the template library, um, and the question types, um, what you're seeing is the, the button to click to add your audio. And it's as simple as what it's showing you right now. Um, add the audio to slide. Um, you record, you can record up to 30 minutes on a slide. Um, so as my college daughter said, wow, a professor could actually do pretty much his whole, um, his whole lecture um, on one slide. <laughs> but um, you can use this for instructions. You can use audio to um, wish happy birthdays or celebrate um, special milestones in your kids' lives, whatever it is, because you're teaching them um, asynchronously and you're maybe um, uh, assigning this work ahead of time. You can add the audio and they can understand and hear your voice. Which and, is my, and, and my take on that, Susan, is when I can add audio, that means students at any age can access the information without the ability to read, which means yeah. when I'm working with littles, I can work with a higher degree of academic skill because they don't are not dependent on reading to do that. Right. Uh, speaking and listening are standards. And then accessibility wise, kids who may don't have as good a vision can fully access things. And I, I really think that's a huge benefit. 100%, 100%. And, and um, ELLs too. And ELLs too, right. I know we've had so many, um, I've had so many sped and resource teachers and assistive technology um, teachers contact me since our webinars. Just absolutely thrilled that we have this ability to include all students. Um, we also launched um, student pay sessions straight from the launch pad. So right from starting a lesson now, you can select which mode you want to that teach. That is awesome. In. If you're going to teach live, um, you can go straight like I just did or you can do it into student paste activity where you would then either assign this through Google Classroom or um, you get a link which you can copy right straight into an LMS system or send out through email. So um, super- And what I love about student paste right now is there's really two questions. You hear a lot of discussion about whether kids have Wi-Fi at home, but I think the real question is more subtle. Do they have a device with Wi-Fi? Right. Because you know, dad might be doing their work on the laptop and mom might be on the iMac and Jimmy can't jump into your session at nine or Susie can't be in your session at one. And with student pace to ask, ask uh, to answer your question M. Falkingham, the students can work through that at any time they want on their own pace. They don't need a teacher. And that's why I think the audio slides are so incredible because now I can leave instruction on on each slide that's audio and each kid can get it done whenever they want. And I think that's just such a winning combination in a blended learning environment. It's crazy. Exactly, exactly. And I think that kind of lends us right to um, my, our next question, which was just kind of to, to point that out, is that with Pear Deck, we're device agnostic and it doesn't matter what type of a voice, uh, device you have, an iPad, a Chromebook, a laptop, a, um, you know, a even just a uh, my thing, a screen with a keyboard or a phone, um, whatever. I bet is. some kids have figured out how to do this on a PlayStation or an Xbox. I'm just going <laughs> to bet you, Susan. Just betting you. I would, um, I would think so. And um, hopefully I can actually um, just uh, show these responses because they kind of look like um, we have them all over, um, all over the board. Um, I'm showing you this um, from the teacher viewpoint which we call this the overlay view. Um, we are over communicating cool. right now. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's a drawing slide, which are super fun slides. And we know our That's drawing, awesome. draggable slides are very popular, especially. Um, and, and then Susan, to make it a drawable slide, you basically just put an image in your Google uh, or PowerPoint, and then you just basically say, make it drawing slide, right? So this is not a very technical thing to do. 
No. And the drawing flag, which is nice, it looks like some people have even discovered it, saying we've loaned something. I can't see behind there, but I could look at these individually and get them um, as, as well. I could also lock the slides at this point, which, you know, might be a good idea to um, see if we can get those locked. Um, and then that could just stop all the drawing. But this is beautiful. See, we're all in this together wherever we're located. Look, we got now check marks and stars. Yeah. We, got, uh, we got people that are circling multiple ones. I love it. Pretty so cool. That, that's great. So, okay, so we have all kinds of devices. That might be a great time for me to throw in a new prompt and, and I could ask if I wanted to continue the conversation. Um, you can ask questions on the fly. Um, I'm not going to do it right now, but I just want you to know this would be a way to extend conversations with the students and, you know, exactly how yeah. do you use it, what time of night do you use it, when are you using it, is it your brother's laptop? And, and, there's, <laughs> and there's a lot better clarity when you don't have 300 uh, inputs. Exactly. But Although it's got a kind of a beauty of it's all, all of its own. You might want to make this into an office painting. I know, and you you can t you can totally print out the slides really from your sessions at the end. Um, when you get your data, um, you get a spreadsheet. You can export all of the data from every answer into a Google spreadsheet, um, and on off of that, you can also reopen the teacher dashboard anytime and look at the drawing and draggable slides. And that would be a great time to print one out when you go back to school and have a beautiful classroom of all these nice drawings um, in your classroom. Um, so. Here's another slide. This is a dragging slide, draggable slide. You're just dragging an icon. And if we can see again, I could use- You got the little dot there at the bottom. The little blue dot at the bottom. Um, when you're designing these slides, um, there's multiple icons that you can um, put in. And um, like there's numbers and just different symbols and that type of a thing that you can put in. And then um, there's different colors and all sorts of things. So you can drag to maps, you could drag to parts of the human body. Uh, you, you know, what, whatever you're going to use, timelines, that type of a thing. I am trying to show my responses, but I will tell you they're not showing up. But I am seeing that uh, I would say 90% of everyone's dot is over on the every student deserves a voice. Um, but to your point, John, what you were saying is like you don't need to reinvent the wheel all the time and that you can just use the same templates over and over again, just like you use the same edge of protocols. Um, this is the same template you just did, but you're answering the question, does every student deserve a voice? Um, and, and just a different angle to the same, um, almost the same type of a question. Mm -hmm. and if I wanted to show the responses for that, um, I think they're not showing up on my draggable slides. We have so many people here. So I'm gonna move on to that and um, just put in the next slide, which is really, um, the reason why we created Pear Deck um, was, was to kind of answer the um, difference between those, those two slides, um, between um, every student deserves a voice and every student is heard, um, is that Pear Deck created the company. We're a small company of educators, most all of us are, and we created it so that we can give every student a voice in the classroom through technology and every teacher deeper insight into their students learning. Um, we wanted to make sure it's not just the first row kids when you're in the classroom, um, but it is the ones that don't speak up for whatever reason, whether it's a language barrier, they don't know the answer, they don't just want to answer. Um, but when we get everybody responding, we get deeper insights into their learning and you have them um, and the data um, as those responses. So that's just a little bit about Pear Deck. And I am really excited now for you, John, to take on the next um, couple of um, slides for us so that we can really learn more about how Edge Protocols is going to help us in our remote learning and with our kids. Definitely. And I've got a quote that adds on to this. If any of you guys know Sam Patterson at Sam Patui on the yes. Twitter. Yes. Um, Sam had a, a one paragraph blog post that may have been the most powerful blog post I've ever written and uh, I've ever read. And I saw it about oh, three, four years ago. It totally changed my brain. And it basically said, don't raise your hand. I'm calling on everybody. Right. Right. And I just want you to think about that for a second, because if you're a classroom teacher, you know, there are kids that answer too much and there are kids that never answer at all. And the problem with that is you end up with a situation where 
you're not really knowing what's going on. I always think of my early days of teaching when my principal encouraged us to have kids put their thumb up if they got the, uh, the concept. And the problem with that is uh, kids will tell you things just so they're able to go to recess. And so when you say, do you get how this works? They'll say, oh, of course I do. But that's not really what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is an academic output. So if you want to go to the slide with the sweater on it. Um, okay, so hopefully you can, can you see that? Yeah, I think we're good. Right. So um, right. this is actually a FET activity, which is spelled P-H-E-T, and it's from the University of Colorado. Now this is just a still picture, but basically think about giving 30 first graders balloons. Susan, how's that going to end? Ah, sorry, I, I'm not touching this. It's just freaking out on its own. That's okay. The, yeah. If I give 30 first graders balloons, within three minutes, half of them are popped. And then I've got other kids eating them, right? And the whole point is science. It's not balloons. So if you go to PHET, if you just Google FET, you can actually see activities like this where what's cool about it is every single kid can do the activity. So in this FET activity, what happens is we have the kids, uh, we show them that if I rub the balloon against the sweater, that some of the protons and electrons change. And that's, the, that's how static electricity moves around. So if you guys just want to uh, draw in the drawing window that Susan's going to open up in a second, you can literally draw what it looks like when the balloon has only negative protons. And so you just have the kids scribble a little bit of a sweater or any sort of clothing, although wool sweaters are especially effective for this. And you just have the kids indicate that the sweater is plus and minus, and now the balloon is only minus. So okay. you just simply have the kids draw that. And what happens is that's better and different is if there's a kid that's a, like a Diane Mate, Mapes, for example, who's a fast answerer and likes to talk, and maybe Shannon who's in the back and she's kind of quiet, that's not an equitable response uh, situation for the kids. So when I say, here's a thing, and uh, I want you guys to draw what you just learned, we're actually doing what's called a sketch and tell right now. So you draw what you learned and give one or two facts. And so that is equity because every kid can participate. But the other edge protocol piece of that that's cool is that you can actually have kids, um, you can actually have, if the kids don't get it right, you can do the activity immediately again and have them get that thing squared away before you move on. When you give kids worksheets and then just hand it out, you're not going to get that response. What you're going to get is you're going to get in there and you're going to have kids uh, three or four days later when they get the response that wasn't right, you won't have a chance to ad adjust for that. And then Michelle V has a great question, Susan. Are student responses kept for the future? Because I think she's gonna love your answer. Um, yes, of course that they are. Everything that you have, every answer, it becomes a data point for you. Um, and at the end of your lesson, whenever it is you end, um, like if, they're in a, if it's in student pace mode, um, asynchronous, you can leave it open as long as you need to to the end of a semester or just to the end of the week. Um, you can get the answers, export them to um, Google Sheets for um, grading, for planning purposes, for whatever it is that um, you are going to um, use the answers um, to reflect. Yep. And so, again, I can literally have the kids draw it. If they don't get the concept explained well, I can just reset and go again. Somebody asked a question that I just saw right here. Are the students' responses kept for future view? Um, Susan, and I believe you have a really good answer for that. Yes, and the, the answer to that is yes as well. Um, anything that, the, um, like the drawings or draggable slides or anything else that's in teacher dashboard, you can always reopen um, the te teacher dashboard and take a look at them, or as I said, um, you get the responses. Um, you, they're, they're saved in your drive. They're not saved with Pear Deck. We don't have any proprietary um, usage over that. Um, the, this is just yours, and that is a, um, a big difference, I would say, with um, Pear Deck and some other things that you might be using is that anything that you create um, in, stays in your drive and it is yours as long as you have a Google Drive. Um, so we don't, um, we never take it away. Anything you create in Pear Deck as a premium um, Pear Deck user, it always stays that way, always drag and always drop. I am really sorry about um, what is happening on our screens here. Um, John, I know you wanted to talk. Um, oh, no worries. 
slide down to 19. We'll just pick it up there. Um, so if, any, if any of you guys have seen or heard of Math Reps, I want to give it a shout out to um, Amanda Sandoval right now. So she was at home and she's got a first grader and she had her kid doing these kind of crappy packets and things. And she said, I can't stand it anymore. So what she did was she took some of our math reps, mathreps.com, and she broke them out. And just follow this, Susan, how beautiful and simple this is. One concept per slide and done synchronously. If you go up just one slide there, Susan. So imagine this one. Your I, students in your class, if they were working independently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one right there. Okay, if they would simply, let's say the number of the day was 21. They would put that in the the middle they would go up 10 down 10 plus one minus one really simple but each kid could write their answer in on one slide synchronously or asynchronously and so if you have a situation where if you're teaching especially like primary you could totally lay this slide deck down and this is one of the beauties if you haven't heard of edge of protocols yet the work is the same every day the only thing that changes is the number so guess what my prep time for tomorrow is susan i just need to think of a number <laughs> so that makes that really simple if you're a math reps fan if you haven't seen math reps it's basically the idea it's mathreps.com or mathreps.org what happens is you go in there and look at look at this right here this is awesome don't do a thing leave it right there susan this is the it. magic that's perfect <laughs> that's perfect <laughs> look how quickly i can see how my class is doing if i have eight or nine slides a day that take kids through these concepts i'm gold I can grade this in a couple minutes. I can see who needs help. And it's really, really cool. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's, it worked at just the right time, Susan. That's awesome. Okay. Next, go to the next slide. This is okay. the next section, uh, slide 20. This is the next one on the math rep. So let's use the same thing. And if you look at the bottom right, there's the example. So now what I have the kids doing is you take the two numbers and you make equations. Now, normally... I would have a worksheet and the kids would have to have an answer key and tomorrow it would be different. This way I just blast right through it and the kids, the kids are just simply manipulating the numbers. The work is approximately the same every day. So their cognitive load is going down like crazy. So this is where math reps and Pear Deck are just such a beautiful pairing, just a tremendous pairing. It's awesome. So I, I'm going to try and show some of these responses so they can kind of take a look. Yeah, let's at show them. a few. And, and again, this is kind of a metacognitive concept here, you guys. The idea is that you make your math rep for the week, which is eight or nine slides. Mm -hmm. You use the same slides every day. The only thing that changes is the number. And you get to see what all the kids yeah. do if they're in, a, in an asynchronous mode. At the end of the day, I print the report. I'm good to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's and go on to the next one. I think, I think they're getting the concept. I think we're good. There. Okay. Okay. I think that's good. And then um, did we do your, um, the sketch and tells? Um, want me we did, to we did close enough on the sweater, but I think we're doing good on time. Let's just get into the next stuff. Okay. All right. So then um, the, the, just the next few slides that I was going to show were some of the different um, Pear Deck um, resources um, that we have in some specific content areas. Um, again, this is a draggable slide. Um, and I'm going to move on back down over to your Buka Kucha. Is that how I say it? Oh, Buka Kucha. Yeah, Buka Kucha. Okay. Let's go down to um, that. And so, let's talk about this. So Buka Kucha, if you guys have heard of Pecha Kucha, I know Lee Howell down in Texas is cool like that. Um, Pecha Kucha is basically, uh, for lack of a better term, it's a Japanese drinking game. Uh, people get around and do slides and they get an exact amount of time. They get 20 seconds per slide exactly. No more, no less. And their job is to talk people into an idea. So Buka Kucha, uh, Marlena Heburn, my award-winning co-author, she chopped off the Pecha and she put on Buka. So this is what it would look like. Think of it like a flash lit circle. If you want to go on to the next one, Susan. Okay. You, you're going to give kids three minutes to talk about what they're doing in their book. And I love lit circles. I mean, I love them. But the problem is when you give a lit circle to a 12 year old John Carippo, here's what John's gonna do on Monday. Hey John's your lit circle done? Uh, no, uh, I haven't finished the book yet. Tuesday, John, have you worked yet? No, I'm not done with the book yet. In Book Kucha, we work now. 
So this is uh, day one, which is character versus reality. And so we're doing the conflict version. And the way I like to train kids with movies. So I would say put a movie poster here and put an illustration here. Using a tool like uh, Pear Deck, kids can easily drop in that movie poster and that illustration. So I'll do what one of the kids would do if you want to go to the one slide forward, Susan. So here's my sample book, Akucha, and you give the kids like three minutes to build the slide. And for goodness sakes, they only need two pictures, right? And then they think about what they're gonna say. So this might not resonate with some of our younger viewers right now, but Young Frankenstein is a movie that I enjoy. And one of the conflicts is character versus self because Gene Wilder, that's the crazy guy on the right, he spends the whole movie trying to convince people that he is not a Frankenstein to the point where he says, my name is Frankenstein. And in the end, the internal conflict loses and he ends up making the Frankenstein monster again. So imagine each one of your kids getting three minutes to drop in what their book of Kucha concept is on the book they're reading. And this is the key that defeats the 12 year old John Carippo, wherever you are right now. And you can have six types of conflict. You can have character traits. You can describe the protagonist, the antagonist. You can talk about the plot. You can talk about something ironic but the Buka Kucha concept is basically this simple. Three minutes, two pictures, kids share for about five to 10 seconds each. You can finish the whole class off in eight minutes. You don't have anything to grade tonight and they've built it all in Pear Deck. It's really cute. That's amazing. I would have loved to have been able to teach with these. <laughs> it made such a big difference. And kids beg for more. They're like, can we do one more round? And you're not always gonna get that from your textbooks or your accelerator reader. Did I just say that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so awesome. That's awesome. Um, I see a lot of questions in the chat about um, asking some of these questions. Um, John, maybe you want to address some of them. Um, how, do you, how do you do that type of a concept remotely? Um, you want to go for that? Well, kids can add images to a blank. Mm -hmm. um, they can add numbers. They can write. They can, I think kids can record their own audio. Is that correct, Susan? Um, no, that is not um, quite yet. We um, literally just announced and it came out with the audio feature for teachers. Okay, um, so, so that, that is definitely something that um, we hear um, seems now. Seems like it's coming. That, that's, it sounds like uh, it may be on the um, roadmap for the future. So Yeah. So basically all the kids need to do is I just need to set up a blank slide where the kids like a collaborate slide where the kids can add a picture and a phrase and they're off to the races. It's pretty mm -hmm. quick and easy. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, um, so and then again, I'm staying in that same concept. If we're going to do conflict all week, Susan, what's my slide development time for tomorrow? None because we're doing conflict again tomorrow. I just tell the kids today, make the conflict character versus character go mm -hmm. tomorrow. It's character versus society go my prep time plummets and the metacognitive piece for kids skyrockets yeah yeah it's awesome, that's awesome. plus oh plus no grading that's my favorite mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um, that's fabulous i think um I, i'm a i'm a little nervous to like kind of move my slides around <laughs> to be <laughs> honest i think they were very happy being in your edge protocol world um for a while um, so I'm going to just um, go through a couple more slides just to give some of you that are out there that are looking for different activities to do um, with your kids um, remotely um, is that with Pear Deck, we produce um, weekly wonders internally. They're broken into three levels. Um, you can subscribe to get these in your inbox uh, or get them on the website, but they're perfect activities that are already built and they're put into, you can put them into student pace mode and send them um, out. Um, if you're, you know, giving deadlines or um, due dates, that type of a thing, um, you can um, get those to come back to you too. But they're good examples of what um, you can do right now, as well as um, with, we have these Newzella daily decks that were partnered with Newzella. You, there's one for every day of the week um, based off of a relevant news article. You can, again, have those, you can subscribe to those. They come to your inbox on a Sunday, so you see all five of the um, week's activities, you could choose to do them as repeatable daily activities with your kids. They come with a bell ringer and they also come with an um, exit ticket. Um, so what did they learn um, that day? So some teachers use these every day um, of the week, um, even in, you know, non-remote settings, of course. Uh, and, you know, and that's just a little shout out. It's like, 
Pear Deck was designed um, not only for um, class, class teaching, live teaching, but we have always had um, teachers from remote um, learning districts um, out here in the West and um, homeschooling um, charter schools. So we've always had remote um, teachers using Pear Deck, but now more so than ever, we've really tried to address um, some of the um, key, key areas that um, people want to see. And with that, um, just I just wanted to put this in as a web slide so that you can see you can embed web slides directly into Pear Deck. So what mm -hmm. you were saying prior, John, is that you can use Pear Deck as your platform, your go-to place where kids yes. don't have to go all over the web trying to find a game or a map. Right. App so you could literally put the FET activity right in your Pear Deck, put your quizzes right in your Pear Deck. All those kinds of things can live in that same deck. Absolutely. So um, that's really important. I think it's an amazing feature because I hear from my friends that are parents that are trying to homeschool and also um, do their own jobs. Um, is that, you know, they're like, they have lists of places that they're supposed to go with their kids. And that's like almost impossible, right? So if we mm -hmm. want kids to be logging in and um, learning, um, we want to make it as easy as possible for them and their parents to be able to um, support them. So I think using something like, um, or the only thing like Pear Deck, um, to be able to keep all of this as a repository um, is really important. So that's why I have that website, but it's also there because at the end of this lesson, you're going to get a takeaway. Um, and we'll shout out for our takeaways because you can publish the entire lesson into your students' um, drive. They'll get a copy of it. You're gonna get a copy. Um, oh, I think you're anonymous though. You're not gonna get a copy of my takeaways today, sorry. Um, if you hadn't logged in anonymously, but we did that on purpose so we could get more of you here. Um, but when you log in with your own um, email or um, with Gmail or Microsoft account, students get a takeaway and that's their copy of the lesson and a place for them to be able to reflect and also um, study from. So that's, that's why um, these are here. Um, I think, well, let me see, I have one more question to show you too, um, is this final one here is to see um, if you learned anything new today. Um, we're going to um, start to kind of finish up, but this is the end of exit ticket um, bell, uh, the end of the day bell ringer that brings kids together to be able to articulate what they learn. And it's, let's see if you saw anything new. And then Susan, a couple of good questions. Um, how does Newzella interact with um, Pear Deck? So if I had a Newzella account, could I just drop that URL, URL in? Was that basically the way that would work? Um, you can just go straight to the Pear Deck website and sign up for it. Um, and it's, if you're a um, Pear Deck um, premium user, um, it's automatic. You don't have to have a, um, a special Newzella account. You can just get it right through um, Pear Deck. That's awesome. That is really cool. And again, I just want to be clarity because we're sharing new ideas with people and sometimes hearing it three or four different times or ways is super good um, that Basically, you can make a Google or PowerPoint deck. You can draw, drag in pictures or videos because URLs uh, are embeddable mm -hmm. uh, or a Fed activity. And then at the end of that video or activity, you just put in one more deck that says, draw what you learned. And if you add some pictures and or words to the Google slide deck, the kids can draw on top of that, which is basically what they did when they were agreeing and disagreeing, right? That's just a picture in the background. Right. And then once you do the overlay, they can simply, simply drag the dot wherever they want. And it's super cool, super simple. It's actually mind-bendingly simple. It's like the first time you have a latte, you're afraid to order it. You're like, I want a latte. And they're like, yeah, it's not, it's not that big a deal, guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so typically, again, my answers would be showing on this main board when I um, click on my show responses. But they, um, I guess there's a lag between um, my, my two screens. So I am going to just, once again, bring over this teacher dashboard. And this is probably a great time to be able to answer questions about the teacher dashboard. I think this is the most powerful part of Pear Deck is being able to see in real time responses mm -hmm. and know whose responses they are. Um, again, today you logged in anonymously, so I'm not quite sure who the bear is, but on a typical classroom day, I'd have my kids log in either through Google Classroom or through the Join TV 
and I would know um, their names would show up right underneath each of these um, answers and responses. And the other thing that's on here, um, there's a little face. That's the face that you selected when you first came into Pear Deck. We call that our student climate data. Oh, and that's cool. Nothing more important. I think um, I was that teacher that stood at the front door of my classroom every morning to kind of assess what was walking in the door, what the environment was going to be like. Yeah. And we can't do that anymore, right? So you just have a little bit more insight as to how your student is feeling that, that day. If you see a red face um, on the same student uh, more than you know two days in a row, it would definitely be a day they're caught up. Uh, I can move this back, but I do like to show this dashboard. Um, so student climate data is here. You also have the ability to just select maybe some specific responses that you want to have as a um, discussion in your class. Um, I think this is a really fabulous way to promote further um, Typically yeah. what would be happening as I'm starring, only those five would show over here on the main screen. Um, so this allows you just to select some answers off of the um, other answers. Fabulous thing for math talks, fabulous thing for students to understand um, viewpoint and perspective. So they start to see and have empathy um, for their fellow students that there's different ways of doing things or interpreting a question. Um, so I love that star feature. You can also just only star one specific student and highlight that one that never that never shares typically, right? Um, so you have those abilities. And then finally, um, behind the three little dots, you can hide a particular response. So that's a little bit about what's on the teacher dashboard. Um, but what I would like to say is that we have so many other webinars on um, that are completely complimentary, that are live um, every day of the week, not weekends any longer. We were originally were doing some on Saturdays and Sundays. But um, I know as of last week, we had, as I said, um, through those webinars, we've taught over, eight, it might even be 20,000 different um, uh, teachers from across the world um, with those. And I really highly encourage you to take a look at some of those other specific webinars so you can get an idea um, of, you know, how to use Pear Deck um, more, more, more deeply. Um, so I, I'm, again, this is kind of like freaking out, like a lot of different answers on here. Mm -hmm. um, well, and somebody just asked, um, you know, or mentioned that this, just this one feature is like Padlet. Plus you have all the other things. And that's what I like about this kind of a tool is that, you've got the ability to do multiple types of things all in one place. And you're doing most of your preps in a place that you're very familiar with, like um, Google Slides or PowerPoint. Right. So you're in your normal environment and all you're really doing is adding these different overlays where people can drag a dot or draw a picture or answer a question. And it, especially in a blended environment, it makes you crazy productive. Right, exactly, exactly. So um, I think um, we're kind of running out of time, but I, um, I agree. I would have loved, I always learned so much from you, um, John, about Edge Protocols. I have your book right here on my desk and uh, <laughs> the field guide book number one um, is what I've gotten through. But uh, some of my uh, fellow friendly districts that are um, partners with us um, use your Edge of Protocols. There's a sh I'm going to shout out to um, Jeff out there at Mountain View School District. He is a, a their district's a huge fan of using um, Edge of Protocols for their teachers and their um, and their learning. So um, I think we see some of these other answers on here, which has been um, just great. So I think I'm going to let you finish this out. I, we want to, um, of course, thank everyone um, for coming and um, being part of us um, today. Um, we couldn't have. Um, I, I feel very honored to be here. I feel very honored to be amongst um, educators that really care about learning and um, learning for the sake of themselves and for their students. So um, I, we really um, wish you all well from Pear Deck. And I know we're all honored that we get to be in this place with you and help you with your um, teaching. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you for uh, leading this. And I just love this. The, the, I love the look and feel of Pear Deck. It's very kid friendly. I love the watercolors. I want to give a shout out to Diane Mapes and Shannon Tablado for being on their best behavior today. They were excellent <laughs> students. Um, and then if you guys had not heard of Edge Protocols before, or you had and you want more, 
one of my favorite things about being me is free lifetime tech support. So if we did something that kind of made you go, that's pretty cool. I want to know more. I'm right there on Twitter. My email is jcaripo at q.org. Um, if you need more, hit me. I will, I will feed it. And I, I think plenty of people in the conversation will verify that if, if you ask me a question, you're definitely getting answers. So I'm more than happy to follow up with that kind of stuff. Yes. And, um, and, and that on that being said, too, um, I am located here in the San Francisco Bay Area. I typically travel throughout the state to visit with all of you and attend as many queues as are possible. Like we have to shout out to Q, right, John? Well, it's fun to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fun. Um, yeah, so I can't wait to see you all again. But please, if um, you need any help, um, we're here to help you and to um, answer questions and just be available um, in whichever way we possibly can. And I'm at, I just put in my email into the chat and I uh, put my Twitter in. And if on your chat, you guys, if you have the three little dots there, a little Zoom trick, if you, if you click on the three little dots, save chat. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. That is a good one, right? Yeah, I'll put mine in here again too. Um, there oh, that's a pretty good quote. Somebody just said, I've used Padlet for years and this is definitely better than Padlet. So Ooh, that's pretty cool. Oh, there you go. Well, and also there's many things that you can, with that URL, with our website link, we, we work and play very nicely in the playground um, with many of our other tech friends and, you know, shout out to, um, uh, Screencastify and Flipgrid and oh my gosh, I, I, Edupuzzle and um, Gimkit and some of those other friends of ours. So um, we really thank you for um, just everybody attending today. Um, we really, we I really do believe that this experience that we're all going through right now is going to change all of us for the better, and that we won't quickly probably shed the weight of this moment but that it will forever transform our vision of our students and the way that we do school. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Susan. Thank you to John. Thank you for everyone joining. If you registered or have joined us tonight, you'll be receiving a email from us tomorrow morning with the recording and we will try to get to all of the open questions that we didn't answer. If we do not for any reason, we're always available to you at help at Have a great night and happy Teacher Appreciation Week.